right in today's video we're making this lovely planner here i'm going to show you how to download fonts how to get it printed at your local printer how to avoid having a split month where you see here um or split week and all the things so stay tuned I have this clear cover and I'll show you how to select that um, and then I just have my name and the year I it got dirty up here and I was trying to clean it, so that's why it looks like that all right and so then over here you see an about me please call or text it sound so I have this in here in case it gets lost at school or somewhere somebody could call or text me I covered that up for you know privacy and then you have your year at a glance. So in here, I just have events that are coming up, like my dad's birthday, um, my daughter's birthday, some uh, things that I wanna decorate for, so Hispanic Heritage Month, Native American Month, so on and so forth. And mine starts from July to June because that's kind of my school year. I, I start getting ready for school around July and then I usually actually stop around, yeah, June, because I go to summer school in June. Um, and so I need to plan for that. All right, and then we have our, uh, her weekly plans look like this. So it's more of a block plan. And so at the time that worked and I tried it for a couple of weeks and I didn't like it. But you see, I plan for 6 to 9, 9 to 25 to 12, because this was summer break and what I had planned for summer break. So you see, my uh, I was planning to record a video. I was This day, I was going to daycares to find a daycare for my daughter. I want to make sure that I read my Bible every day. I wanted to decorate my classroom. Um, and then some things I wrote in. Now, um, I, like I said, I did not like this layout, and so I redid it. Um, and so you'll see that in a second. Um, I don't believe she actually had these months. I don't remember, but I don't think so. And so I just used some extra templates and put the month in there. And then took some of these cute quotes. The best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time, Abraham Lincoln. Alrighty, and so this is the month view. Of course, it doesn't have all of these events in there. I added those, so church on Sunday, professional development, a teacher work day, the days that I post my, my productive mom videos. If you are not subscribed to my productive mom channel, please do so, link in the description. Um, that content is related to being a mom. And then the days that I post my productive teacher videos, um, the days we have PLCs, um, the first day of school when I get paid. And then in my classroom, I do remediations on Wednesday. So I like to remember that. And then I like to make my copies on Friday afternoon. So, and then they have a quote at the top. All right, so this is the layout I created over here. All right, so um, you see this is July 31st, August 6th, so it's basically the first week of August, and there were some things that I, um, I prefer to more um, a layout with times and when things had to be done. And you see here I marked off when I'll be teaching in the pink, so there's not really much to write there. Um, so 9 30 to 12 and then I have a lunch break and then 12 30 to 4 and then in here I, again I post put when I will be posting videos for my two channels when I have professional development um, when I go to church and then at the bottom my Bible I prefer to check mark so I can say okay I read my Bible I didn't read my Bible um, over here is Friday Saturday Sunday and if I had to do this over, I would have did Monday through Friday and then Saturday, Sunday at the bottom because Fridays are not really busy, but I need that whole layout for Friday. So that's something I would do different. Then down here, I like to add the copies to make. 
So if I need to make any copies, emails, messages, or calls, any parents I want to call, and then next week. I like to know what's coming up next week. Something else I would add in here is a place for prayers. So I like to mark in here um, what students or teachers or friends I want to pray for that come to me throughout the day. So I had that in my last planner. I don't know how it got left out of this one. Um, so this layout is based on a book called The Together Teacher, which I talked about in my, you know, books that you should read as a teacher. Um, and so I love that layout from that book. So I'm using that. Over here on the right is my to-do list. The to-do list basically feeds um, this layout here. So as I, um, each week we have what we call a weekly roundup, which again comes from that book. And in there, I just jot down, or throughout the days, I jot down things on my to-do list. And then during my weekly roundup, once I get to this week, I will put these various things in here. The things that I don't get to will move into the next week's to-do list. Um, so this is, is this the current week? No, this is actually last week and you see it starts to get a little more convoluted as the school year started. And this is my current week. Um, not a lot in here because I've been out due to a death in my family. Um, but you see, there are certain things that I have in here every single time. So my opening routine, which is basically update my calendar, get my slides up, um, check my planner. Those are my opening routine. Same thing for my closing routine. The days that I do remediation, which is on Wednesday, where I pull students who are behind in class and work with them to get on, on task. PLCs, which used to be uh, in the morning, but actually have moved into after school, sadly. Um, then I have in here, I like to order my groceries on Thursdays so that they get to the house by Friday or early Saturday morning because on Saturday, I like to do my meal prep. Um, then you hear, see here Saturday meal prep, lay out my clothes. You know, I like to lay my clothes out. Then I like to uh, get them ironed. I like to do my cleaning and empty my trash and diaper gym. So that's pretty much what my planner looks like. You see I have some sticky notes here. I'm gonna eventually make some tabs, but I haven't decided what kind of tabs I want. So let's flip to the end. Now I make my planner to go from uh, the end of July to December. Um, and why do I do that? Because A, it's, it gets kind of thick if you put too much in there. Also, I usually like to change up some things in the new year. So some of those things that I want to add, I'll add into my January to June planner. All right, so this is the end of December. You can see here, no school, early release days. And um, I have the end of the six weeks on here. So I can know, you know, I need to find the last grades and what have you. All right, so once we get to the end of the month, I have a thought catchers section. So again, this comes from the book, the, the Together Teacher. Again, I highly recommend you read it, link in the description, where you have an area for, as things pop up in your head that you either wanna tell somebody or you wanna do, you put it here. So when I get ideas for my channel, The Productive Mom, I put it here. When I get ideas for productive teacher, Etsy te teacher pay teacher, books or podcasts that I want to read, gifts that I want to buy for friends or family, decorations or next year. And over here is just a blank spot as things pop up. So things that I want to add for my classroom. Then back here you have professional development. So I can log PD so that I can be aware of how close I am to renewing my license. If you don't know or if you're a new teacher, once you get your license, you have to do a PD or CEUs, depending on where you live, they're called different things, and how many credits you get. And for certain states, it's different. When I was in Mississippi, I believe we had to have something like five or six credits uh, to renew your license. 
um, in Texas. I actually don't know what it is, so that's something that I need to write down um, to see, you know, how close am I to renewing my license. Now, I just got my license in Texas, so it'll be a while before I have to do that. All right, then we have meeting notes. So, obviously, we just got out of um, professional development um, because the school year has just started. And so, you can see I have a lot of notes um, from that PD. Um, so, again, from the Together Teacher, I have a notes section. And I like to put them together by, you know, whatever I'm talking about. So in this one, we were talking about accommodations. And then you have a next step. So instead of just writing it down, what are my next steps? My next, next steps are look up accommodations for all my kids and fill out my Google Sheet. Um, I have a Google Sheet where I put all my sped accommodations in. And then it spits out this little kind of accommodations at a glance that I hang up to make sure that I accommodate my students. Um, and then I also add that into my lesson plans, like what accommodations am I using this particular week or what have you. Same with here. This one was about absences and miscellaneous, the grading policy sub plan. So my next step, create a sub binder, create a syllabus with my grading policy and give to kids for them to sign, look up the grading policy. So that's what I like about this template. It gives you next steps instead of you just putting it things here and then forgetting about it so you see I have made a tab for that because at that I got a lot here I need to get done now some of this I've gotten done so I'm gonna check those off in a second all right and then back here is a seating chart I have this back here in case I decide to do a seating chart and for my eighth period I can see I'm already gonna need one um, and so I'll get that together then and then at the end is just another cover of our teacher binder. And because it's all kind of navy, I got a navy cover. And that's it. All right, so now that you've seen my plan, I'm going to show you how I customized her planner as well as how um, I got this printed. And I got it printed, I believe, at Office Max for about $34. Now, if you do it in black and white, it would be more like $19, so almost half. So, you know, that's kind of an option. And I have a black and white one, a black and white one I used last year, so that was a lot cheaper. But, you know, this year I was like, mm, let's get some color. So, stick with me if you wanna see how I customized it and sent it to the printer, specifically, because sometimes if you don't do it correctly, you'll have this page be half of the month. So it would be this Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, and then you have to flip to get to the other side. I didn't like that. So I'll show you how to make sure that your planner months are together, as well as for me, my week of and my to-do list are together. And even this, I really should have put the to-do list over here and then Okay, so before you do anything, you need to download some fonts, especially if you're on a Mac. So um, the font you should download, I will link in the description. It is all KG fonts and it is free. But since I've already downloaded those, I'm gonna find some free fonts to download so I can show you this process. So I just went and typed in font and clicked free on the left-hand side and I'm looking for like a bundle of fonts. Now that pink one there, KG All Fonts, is the one you want. And again, I will link that below. But I'm going to download some fonts that are, I believe they're called BD or BG or something like that. Um, and I'll link those below if you want them. BMD, that's the name of them. All right, so you just wanna hit download. And the way I'm gonna show you, you don't have to go and individually add each of these fonts because if you download those kg fonts there are 300 and something fonts who wants to sit there and hit install all day all right so once you download them on at least on a macbook you'll have to unzip that file and then you can open that file and find the txt files i'm sorry not txt the ttf files those are the actual fonts and so as you can see in here you could select multiple fonts 
and then right click and open or open with the font book um, and they'll pop up there and you will have to individually hit install on each one of them so as you can see here I'm hitting install 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 and that may or may not take you long if you only got one or two fonts but if you download that KG all fonts like I said it's 300 plus fonts ain't nobody got time for that so what you want to do is go to the launch pad on a MacBook and find your font book and get that opened up move that off to the side and then open up the fonts that you want to download. Once you do that, you can go in and then select all the fonts or select the fonts you want to add and just move them over into the font book. Alrighty, so now we are headed to PowerPoint, which is where I created mine. You want to create a new presentation and then um, you can just Click design, slide, slide size, sorry, and you want to make it eight and a half by 11 inches. Um, it doesn't matter about scaling up or scaling down. And then you want to delete all of that good loveliness. And so now click the home button and you want to create templates that can't really be manipulated uh, beyond what you want. So cl click view and slide master and we're going to create our templates in this slide master so don't click the first one there click that second one or any one underneath there and then remove all of the things you see there so let's first start with that table that i have with my hourly minutes or hours that i'm going to be uh, operating you want to have basically five columns and i had about 17 rows but it won't let you pick 17 so just pick as many as it'll let you they come out with this set template that i hate so click that down arrow there and you want to click the black and white one you can move it around wherever you want it to go and resize it you can uh, make it longer or wider however you want to do but i'm going to pretty much leave it like that if you come to the last box and hit the tab button, um, you can add more rows um, if you need them. So I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. I'm going to come to this first uh, row in the second column and type Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday. And again, I wish that I had put Monday through Friday up here. And, you know, if you want to do that, that's fine. And then down here, I just want to put some time. All right, now that I have some times, you can come to that again, last box and hit tab if you need more time. So I'm just going to go to six o'clock. And so then we have a lot of space after the time and real estate is going to be very important here because you only have eight and a half by 11 inches. So resize that out and then I want to come up here and evenly space these columns. So come up here, you want to hit uh, layout and then you want to distribute, distribute columns. And so that even that up, we want to align these um, days of the week in the center. And then now let's work with those fonts that we've added into PowerPoint. Now, if you don't see all your fonts, you might want to turn your computer off or restart your computer, and then you should see them. Uh, it takes a second sometimes. All right, so I'm going to use one of those free fonts, which is this one is KG, Be Still, I, Be Still and No. But in my actual fonts, I use, I believe, APL. Um, and I'll link those. APL, treat yourself. And I'll leave the a APL and AG fonts I love as well. Um, so now keep in mind that when you anything you type in here is going to be on every template. So you want to make sure that this is something that will stay for every week. So here you can merge sales. So let's say you teach from 9 to 10 o'clock. So you can merge the Monday sale. Um, so that you have more real estate to type or you can merge that whole week 
and then I like to merge the nine and ten so that you know that's just kind of one box so you put the nine dash ten o'clock um, and in here you could if this was let's say every day from nine to ten you do PLC or product excuse me professional development you could change the color so you come to table design and click shading that yellow was a little bright so maybe I had to take it a little bit out to pink um, favorite colors rose gold so this pink is so gorgeous so um, like I said maybe you do PLC from 9 to 10 or professional development from 9 to 10 you could type that in here um, but remember whatever you type in here is going to stay so you want you want this to be something that you pretty much do every week so let's say from 9 to 10 you're teaching so um, that's why I type that in there and then I'm just going to align that to the middle and center and make it a little bit bigger so it looks a little more aesthetically pleasing so then in here I'm just gonna come in here and select bullets and I want a check mark and then we're gonna type Bible because I read my Bible every day and I wanna be able to check that off. And so you could Command C and then select those other boxes and Command V and it will um, pop up in there until you have those check marks and you could change that to whatever fits your life. Um, here I'm just sort of moving it around and then I wanna add week of. And so, um, I just got a text box here you can double tap on any PowerPoint and it'll give you a text box type week of and I use KG blank space solid here which should be in that free font guide and then now we want to put something here that isn't going to be here every week so you want to click that slide master and then you want to click insert placeholder and click text so then you can resize that text to whatever you like I like to get rid of all those levels because you don't need them now if you need them you can leave them there um, I want to get rid of get rid of bullets and then I want to uh, format this to have a specific font so here I'm going to use AG AG nap queen now I did try and look for a font that is in the KG free fonts but I just love AG fonts that's Amy Gooseneck I forgot her name but I'll link her fonts here um, and AG nap queen AG nap queen is my absolute favorite so um, in here I usually do about 32 fonts but it wasn't enough room so I you can see here kind of moving it over you just want to play with this until it looks the way you want so here I'm just going to type in here the, 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 the months that have a lot of words in them just to kind of see how it would look. Um, and again, do some formatting to make it look the way you want it. So once I see, okay, that looks okay, then I'm going to come up here and hit the undo button because you don't want that there. Um, and then uh, again, make sure you align it to look the way you want so let's close that master view and so you can see that if I hit add that layout you see the only thing that is available for me to alter is what week it is um, now if you want to type something in those tables or whatever you can just double tap and hit and it will give you a text box that you can type in here so here you see me typing a date it is currently August 16th and you can type that in there and you can see I have a little room to spare so you can increase your fun or whatever right there is where I double tapped and um, I'm adding something basically to the table moving it around and so this is where you would be actually editing a a week that you are um, that you're it's actually editing a week instead of editing the master uh, template remember the 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 slide master is just a template that will not change you have elements in there you don't want to change and then the actual uh, once you 
click a layout outside of Slide Master, then that's when you're actually creating and editing your weeks and doing all your things. All right, so we're back in the Slide Master view. And so at the bottom there, I'm going to add another table. And so I wanna add in here, um, if you remember on my template, I had copies to make, emails, messages, calls, and then that next week. So we added a table with one column and I believe five rows. So we want to you make it go up there and make it black and white and then resize it to fit however you want. I want it a little bit smaller and it wouldn't let me make it any smaller. So just select that table, hit the home button and then um, decrease your font and it'll make those uh, the spacing uh, a lot better. So then I just want to type copies to make and um, you can adjust that font to your liking. All right, I wanted to add another column for that emails, messages, and calls. So right click, insert, column to the right, and then you can adjust. I typed the emails, messages, and calls. And then I'm going to do the same by adding another column to say next week. And so you can adjust this for however you want. And then right above this in a few minutes, I'm going to add another um, three column table for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Now that we have that, you can select um, one of the rows if you want, right click and merge cell if you didn't want those lines there. So I actually do want those there for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you're going to see me put those back and opt to do that for next week. So that's where I actually have um, a merged box where I don't necessarily need lines. I just want to be able to freely write whatever it is I want. So. Um, feel free to customize this in whatever way that makes sense. Alrighty, so we want to close master view and let's add um, one of those layouts. So select that particular layout. You can make multiple layouts for maybe your calendar view, your week view, whatever. So you see in there I added the date and now I just double tapped and that gave me a text box. I'm going to change it to that KG, be still I know, and maneuver it so that it's in the box uh, for Friday. And, you know, you can type in there whatever you would like to type. You see there I added a checkbox, and then I'm going to add opening routine. And I recommend highly that you get an opening and a closing routine. Closing being the most important because... You want to come in every day feeling like things are already ready to go. And what's in my closing routine? Um, my slides are ready to go for the next day or video or whatever. Um, my calendar has been updated. Uh, maybe my room is swept or my copies are made or whatever it is that makes your day smoother. So if you get to work late, you're already ready to go. So, all right, so I'm back in my actual planner. And let's say um, you put this in your like slide sorter view and you get to your planner and you see that a month is separated. So look, you see September on one side and then you see half of the calendar. Well, you want the calendar side by side. So what I usually do is I get out of the slide sorter view and go back to just kind of viewing it as one slide and then just hit add slide and you want a blank slide and all you want to do is type in here that this page was intentionally left blank you can make it a cute fun if you want i usually don't make it cute because it ain't meant to be you know pretty it's just there's a placeholder um and then once you format it the way you want uh, you can go back to that slide sorter and see if it's looking the way you want. Now, I'll tell you, just because the slide sorter says it, you won't be able to tell until you're in, um, in 
until you're in Staples or Office Max or whatever you use to print it. So now you want to export it as a PDF. I'm going to put it on my desktop so that it's something easy for me to see. I'm going to name it Demo Planner. And then once that is doing its thing, you want to head on over to Office Max or Staples or UPS or FedEx. I've had all of them. They're all going to cost around the same thing. And you want to click Services, Document Printing, and you want to do Presentation. Um, once you click Presentations, uh, it will show you uh, various ones. It really doesn't matter which one you click because you'll have an option to change it. But I usually go for um, the Spiral Bound Presentation. That's what I have now and that's the one I like the best uh, and then you just want to hit customize so once you get in here you're just going to upload your uh, document and once it's uploaded it will show you what it's going to look like when it prints so whatever you see on that screen that's what it's going to look like when it prints so if you don't like something you should fix it then right then and there now I will say Office Max, all of them are really good about fixing little problems or if they mess up something, they'll, they'll fix it. All right, so you want to customize, so scroll down. Um, I usually leave it, keep to size. Um, you can do it in full color or black and white, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in black and white. And you can't see, you can see that in black and white it is nearly half the price but baby no um I, I had to have mine in color you see that this page intentionally left blank there um you want to do double-sided and portrait so those are your print options go up to number two finishing options uh you can change the paper weight but i don't all right, so binding. Here's where I said you could change the, 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 the binding. So if you click that, you can do spiral, comb, tape, wire. I always do spiral bound, um, but you can pick whichever one you want. Because mine is kind of blue, I picked that the spiral would be uh, blue. And it's not really that royal blue, it's a navy blue. Um, you can pick your cover. I usually do a decorative one, but you can do a printable one. So you can use one of your covers but I do that clear cover there. You can do a frosted cover or a color cover, but I prefer that clear cover. Um, so once you select that, then you can pick your back cover. Um, mine is navy to kind of go with the rest of the planner, but and you can opt out of most of these and cut some of the costs. All right, lamination, perforation, don't pick those in finishing. In advanced, um, I don't usually pick any of these. I don't add in index tabs, but we are going to use that remove pages in a second. So you see there, August is sort of split, and we don't want that. I'm going to move that recommended options in a second. But here's what your planner is looking like right now with that clear cover, um, with then, you know, the cover page and all of those things and then uh you're about me and all of that so this is what i mean by it looks the way uh it's going to print and you see it looks just how mine was printed so right here is what i was talking about you see that august um half of the calendar is missing we don't want that so i had that page this page intentionally left blank in there you have that in case you need it if you don't you can remove it here so on that page is page 10 so you want to click over to advanced options and then remove pages so um and then you can select what page you want to remove so this is page 10 like i said save and then boom it looks the way you want it to and so you want to go through and select whatever you want to add look it over make sure it looks the way you want and then add to cart now you see mine is about 58 bucks but they have coupon codes and I'm going to show you the coupon code here in a second 
add that coupon code uh, and then also make sure you don't select shipping because shipping is like 10 bucks and ain't nobody got time for this you see that code right there which is summer 20 um, if you look in there there's always a code also if you text them or you join their texting um, you can uh, get another like 5% off so put your code in there and you want to click store and curbside pickup and once you're done you should have your planner ready to go thank you so much for watching this video please don't forget to like comment subscribe and share this video with anyone you think it would help bye